I lost my virginity to a Coke dealer's girlfriend. <music> Sophomore year of college, in thir- it's like a Thursday night. I'm with my good friend, Maurice, one of my best friends. We're playing Star Wars Battlefront on PS2, and he's snapping this chick. And Maurice, at the time, was not shy to snap chicks. I, myself, was a very sheltered Catholic kid, and I was a virgin up until my sophomore year of college. He's snapping this girl. He's kind of getting annoyed, like, whatever, this you know, this chick's annoying. She's dumb. I'm like, oh, she looks kind of good. Have her add me on Snap. So he sends a picture of me. She says he's cute, adds me on Snap. Maurice and I are out the next weekend at my fraternity's party house, and she shows up to the house. So me and Maurice are talking to her for a little bit. She leaves and I was terrified of women. I'll admit that, you know, I wasn't looking to, I wasn't looking to lose my virginity at any point. (laughs) So I am, I hang out with Maurice the rest of the night. We go out to the bars and then on our way back, we stop at Taco Bell. We see my current roommate at the time, ex-girlfriend. So me and Maurice actually get into this huge verbal argument with (laughs) my roommate's ex-girlfriend. It carries over to the walk back to our dorms, and Maurice and this chick are just screaming at each other in front of, like, crowds of people. Like, they're they're both just trash screaming at each other. I had started to sober up. I literally sit down on the sidewalk um, at this four-way stop, and BG BG kids will know this, in front of the uh, Founders dorms. So I'm sitting at this four-way stop, and... Lo and behold, here comes the chick. Oh, you're Tom the Teak. And just picks me up. You want to go home? I'm like, sure. And she just starts walking back to my dorm with me. So she comes back to my dorm. The night transpires. I lose my virginity. And I am a mess the next day. Even though it was my decision, I just felt like, oh, my God. I was crying. (laughs) Maurice is, like, trying to be a good friend and console me. But Maurice, you know, he's way more experienced than me. So he's laughing his ass off at the whole situation. I'm crying, like, oh, my gosh, God hates me. I'm going to hell. I'm a piece of shit. I'm never going to find someone to love me. Like, way over the top (laughs) reaction to this whole thing because it just, it crushed me, right? So I call my dad. I'm crying to my parents because I'm like, I'm a terrible person. (laughs) And then I even went and got, like, STD testing because I was freaking out the next day, which all came back negative, thank God. And for, like, two weeks, I was, like, super just, like, didn't want to go out. I was very depressed (laughs) about the whole thing. And shout out my roommate and Maurice at the time. They were just great friends to me. Like, dude, it's okay. Like, you made the choice. It happens. And, And I did. You know, it was my choice. I just, I, I, I'm not saying I was peer pressured into it, but I definitely just, I wasn't positive that I wanted to lose my virginity at the time, so I was just being really hard on myself. So a few weekends later, we are out at a bar called Ziggy's in BG. Ziggy's has kind of like this square um, wraparound bar in the front part portion, and we are sitting there. It's me, Maurice, uh, our buddy Kyle, and my roommate. So we're talking, hanging out, you know, just a normal night. It's pretty early in the night. It's probably like 11. So, you know, you're buzzing, but you're not like trashed. So Maurice and I, I will admit, and Kyle, we talked a lot of shit. We thought we were, you know, head honchos. Nobody could fuck with this type of thing. This kid walks by, my roommate. You can tell he's pretty drunk, maybe maybe on something else, and just elbows the shit out of our roommate. And we're like, yo, what the fuck? Well, he flips his lid. And my roommate was pretty calm about the situation. He's like, it's all good, chill out. But the kid was, like, trying to fight my roommate, like, screaming at him and stuff. So as we come over, me, Maurice, and Kyle start walking towards the situation, he is getting thrown out of the bar because he's so, like, like ready to fight. So the two bouncers have him, and as they're pushing him away, we start talking shit to him. Hey, fuck you, buddy. Stay away from our friend. You know, like, we're screaming back and forth. Well, like I said, we're buzzing pretty good. And as this whole tr- situation transpires, I see the girl... That I lost my virginity to. And she's running over to the guy getting thrown out of the bar. So I put two and two together. I'm like, hey, fuck you, buddy. I fucked your girlfriend. He loses it. What did you just say to me? What did you say to me? And he's like, his hair is on his face. Say it again. Say it again. And he's getting thrown out of the bar. So I'm laughing my ass off. My buddies are like dying laughing. And I, and I had no clue who the kid was. Like, in all seriousness. Never, never saw the kid before in my life. Didn't think anything of it. Go home. Next morning, we wake up in our 
in our dorm and I see my roommate, he's looking on his phone, typing, he's like looking over at me, seeing if I'm awake. I can tell he's kind of tweaking. I'm like, what's going on? He's like, dude, that dude that you were talking to is DMing me. I'm like, what? He's like, the dude that elbowed me in the back, he's DMing me about what you said last night. I'm like, yeah, okay. So he's an angry college kid who gives a shit. He's like, nah, dude. This kid's like the biggest coke dealer in BG. I'm like, what? He's like, no, Tom, really. Like, this kid deals coke. Like, drives up to Toledo, brings it back. Like, he's a big-ass coke dealer in BG. I'm like, yeah, okay, sure. Like, I've heard bullshit rumors like that from all kinds of people in fraternities and shit. I ain't worried about it. He's like, no, Tom, like, this is a dangerous dude that you pissed off, and he knows who you are. I'm like, no, he doesn't know who I am. I get on my phone. He has, I have like 10 DM requests from the kid on on Twitter, Instagram. I'm like, ah, oh, no, 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 no. I just start blocking. I block him immediately. Don't even reply. He keeps harassing my roommate. At one point, gets my roommate's number. And my roommate's like, Tom, I don't want to be involved in this. Like, this is a dangerous situation. He has put a hit out on you in all of his group chats with people. I'm like, dude, there's no way this is real. He's like, I'm not joking, Tom. This dude is a fucking coke dealer. So that, like, was, like, the point where I'm like, okay, 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 like, what do we have to do? And he's like, I don't know. And the DMs were like, your buddy had a lot of balls for what he said to me last night. That's really disrespectful. Does he know who I am? Like, do you know who I am type of messages? I'm like, okay, this really might not be a joke. So this goes on all of Saturday throughout the day. And my roommate's like, I'm going to a party tonight. A lot of the older guys in my fraternity know him. Let me see what I can do about this whole situation. Because at this point, he is like just, I've already blocked him and he's DMing me from other people's accounts. Like, it was that heavy of a situation. I'm like, holy shit, this is crazy. And, I, and I'm freaking out at this point. I'm like, dude, I, I, I talk shit to the wrong guy. And of course, Maurice has just disappeared. Don't know where he is. He was out talking to some chick. He's gone. So I'm like, in the, I'm, I'm thinking I'm about to get my ass beat. And like, I, I was really more worried about like getting jumped. Like, he's got my name in these random group messages, like, with like, I'm not going to say any team names, but, like, groups of dudes that could beat my ass. <laughs> Skinny white kids get his ass beat by a lot of the people he was texting. So, I'm like, all right, guess we're guess we're going to have to figure out a, a way to make this right. So, and then I really started freaking out because I'm like, does he know? That was probably the biggest concern about the situation. I'm like, does he know that I actually hooked up with his girlfriend? Were they dating at the time? I have no idea. She was snapping Maurice. And then started snapping me. She was out looking for dudes. Like, it's not like I pursued that very heavily. Like, she came to me. I mean, she damn near picked me up right off the sidewalk. So, does he know that, she, that she's doing this? Is she cheating on him? Were they broke up at the time? I have no idea. So, I'm really concerned now, right? Mitch is texting me. He's like, I talked to my buddies. He's at a bar right now. Said he would meet up with you. And I'm like, so, does he know that I actually fucked his girlfriend like do we have to tell him that when we get there he's like i'm asking about that right now his buddies were like don't bring that up and they're like tell it my roommate did he really did tom really fuck his girlfriend and uh, my roommate's like yeah yeah i swear to god should we tell him like and i'm like yeah should we tell him like do i is this like i need to be honest like, like this is like am i walking to like a godfather situation right now like do i need to just be honest and start apologizing like don't tell him dude he'll kill him He'll kill him. You can't tell him. Okay, oh shit, this is heavy. This is heavy. So I'm, I'm like shaking nervous. Get dressed to go to this bar. It was Ziggy's. So we're going back to Ziggy's. It's probably like 8.30, 9 o'clock. There's not a soul in Ziggy's except for the employees. And then at this little round table in the corner is the dude and these two massive like 6'8 dudes with all these gold chains and shit. And he like, this big fucker walks over to me fuck you in here for a motherfucker i'm like okay 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 what's i'm here to talk to him like please don't hurt me sir and so he sits me down at the table and shout out my roommate freshman sophomore year one of my best friends for what he did because he, he walks in the bar with me sits down right next to me almost like mediating the situation he's like look man we were drunk i'm sorry for what he said and he looks at me he's like i respect you I'm like, what? And he's like, you got some balls for what you said to me. But you have to understand. And mind you, he's three years older than us. So he's a fifth-year senior. 
He's like, you got to know who you're talking shit to. I'm like, totally understand. And as nervous as I was, the whole time I'm sitting there, I'm thinking in my head, I can't believe I fucked this guy's girlfriend. <laughs> and not only that, I lost my virginity to this chick. So I'm sitting there like, oh my God, like this is, this is actually happening. And he's like, I'm going to let this one slide. I texted all my group chats. You're good. Tell them not worry about it. We've taken care of the situation. Because I that was my bigger concern. Like, am I going to be out one night and get fucking jumped by some random dudes? That, like, I don't even know who I'm looking for as far as to who be, to be aware of and shit. Like, it was actually a pretty terrifying situation. And, and again, he has no clue that I've hooked up with his girlfriend. And again, we don't know the dynamics. They may have been dating. They may have not been dating. To this day, I do not know that. So who, who freaking knows, right? And I was terrified of that. <laughs> that was my biggest concern the whole time. But it ends up being all good. Shakes my hand. And the crazy thing was, like, I saw him out a lot after that. Maybe it's because I was aware of who he was. But, like, I would see him at intramural games with his girlfriend. I would see him out at the bar. And he would, he would like, see me and, like, shake my hand every time. Like, how are you doing? And I'm like, hello, sir. How are you? Like, <laughs> please don't fuck with me. <laughs> but I would say... That was a valuable lesson for me in a couple ways because I realized, first of all, for me, and, and, you know, I shouldn't say it in a way that I'm being judgmental because, you know, as far as, you know, sexual interactions with people go and how many people you choose to hook up with, that is your choice and that I respect everybody's decisions because everyone functions differently. But for me, I realized that, you know, I didn't want to have a high body count and I didn't want to, I didn't want to sleep with a bunch of people because I realize like sex is something that is de a little deeper than that you know like it's not just a physical connection there is like a mental and spiritual connection so for me i was like okay that's not the type of person i want to be and at least it was my decision but at the same time i was like i don't want to when i do finally meet someone that i really you know do love and care about i'm going to tell them about my past i'm going to tell them everything about it and you know if they still love me they love me and Again, I, I think it was a valuable lesson for me to learn that at a young age that I wasn't. And I'm not saying it's a bad thing, but I just wasn't the type of dude that wanted to go hook up with anybody I could at any time and, you know, get to that point. Because I do feel like regardless of who you are, at some point you do, whether you're the puller or the guy that, you know, hasn't talked to any chicks, at some point you do find that person for you that you really genuinely cherish and care about. So I think that at that time, that's where sex be is a truly special thing. Because when you're into somebody versus just the physical, that's a different type of connection, in my opinion. So so that's just my take on that. Could be totally wrong. But that was what I learned from my virginity story. And I also learned that you got to watch who you talk shit to. And, you know, I at the, again, at the time, my sophomore year, I was working out every day with Maurice because he was trying out for the football team. Like, I was kind of a beast. And I felt good that, like, I was like, take on the world mentality, fuck everybody, and I'll talk shit to whoever the hell I want. But again, I quickly learned, you know, you got to watch who you're talking shit to. I think that changed my mentality to a degree of, yeah, I can be confident in who I am, and I can, you know, be a dog in my own head, but that doesn't mean I have to shit on everybody around me or act like any human being is lesser than I am just because I feel good about myself. So... I would say those were the two lessons I learned from that story. I still can't believe that it all went down that way. And it, my luck, right? Like the one girl, the one time I decide to lose my virginity, it becomes this crazy, out of control thing. But I will never forget that story. I, I will never forget that moment because it was insane. And so my two pieces of advice would be, as far as your virginity goes, lose it when you're ready. Don't let anybody peer pressure you into that. That's your decision, and you lose it when you feel you're ready with the person you want to lose it with. And the second thing would be don't talk shit all the time to whoever the hell you want. I mean, it's one thing to be on the, you know, athletic games and when you're playing sports and stuff. I think that's a fair time to talk shit or joking around with your buddies or, you know, maybe on Xbox Live. <laughs> but I wouldn't do it just to anybody you feel like talking shit to unless you know you can back it up with any motherfucker you ever see because you never know who you're talking shit to when you're doing it out in public at a bar. So those are the lessons I learned from that. What a time. And uh, yeah, episode three, Talks with Tom, season two. I appreciate all the love. We'll keep it going. My, 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 my.
where you swear you went and got the best of me What kind of fool thinks that that shit is meant to be I ain't got time to have a fucking bitch on my mind Gotta stack up, I gotta get my money right Speed up, slow down, what the fuck you want Was on a hundred, now I'm cutting off all I want Ten toes down, but you went and cut them all off Now you calling saying that you want all I got And no disrespect, I ain't with all the fucking clout chasing shit I want it all, but I don't got all that you want yet I need patience, but somehow that's something I don't get, yeah I hope he's fine, I hope he's rich, I hope he dumps you in a ditch We always find something better, don't we, baby? Don't hit me up, don't leave a text, or you'll regret it to your man's I hope he's taking good care of me, baby Mic check, mic check, yeah I like that better.